live on ultiworld.com. We have ponies Ben Van Heuvelen and Sean Keegan. Uh, hey, uh, Edward Stevens, um, bit of a of a tough night for the the pony offense tonight. Um, it it seemed like when you took shots, um, a few of them weren't falling, and uh, and machine was clogging up um, some of your pull plays initially. Uh, what were you trying to do to, to regroup and get a, a foothold on offense in that game? I'll tell you what I told the guys. Uh, what I told the guys was keep your foot on the gas and keep shooting because that's what's worked for us all season and you don't change a game plan in a big game. The other thing we were talking about was uh, moving the ball quickly, switching the field so that when, uh, when their defenders were over committed to poaching one lane, we could swing it and attack the other lane. I think that was very effective on the points that we, you know, were able to tack up the field. It, we were scoring very comfortably. Um, so, you know, hats off to them for playing very good defense and taking us out of, uh, out of our plan A a couple of times. Um, that being said, I think uh, a couple of balls go differently in the first half. Uh, would have been a different ball game. Um, Sean, you've been a uh playing pretty uh, uh, just incisive handler offense um, all season, but particularly this game, it seemed like every attack uh, started with your movement and uh, or, or your like blady break throws over to the um, over to the uh, backhand side. Uh, what uh, what has been the key for you in terms of really finding that fire to, to get an offense going this season? Uh, well, I mean, I'm very fortunate to play with extremely talented players that know where the space is. Um, and, you know, I consider it my job to get it to those guys. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of practice goes into it. Like I said, we, you know, we have guys that attack empty space. You know, we, we have a, a really good offense that teams have a hard time playing match defense against. So, you know, there's a lot of zone and poachy looks that we face. And, and you know, guys go to the spots and, you know, we trust my to, to hit them so I just have practiced against one of the best D lines in the world all year um, and they make it really really hard so you know I kind of get a lot of experience throwing lady break throws hey guys uh, Cody thanks for joining us you played machine twice at the pro championships a couple months ago came out with two tight victories over them what would you say are the highlight differences between tonight and those games beside the obvious results? And what led to this? Yeah, I mean, on field, I, I think it was a very similar machine D-line that we saw, right? They, they did a really nice job of mucking things up and making it hard to find easy open guys. Um, like, like Ben said, we, we had a few hucks that you know, just missed that we're used to hitting, and we would take the same shots again. And I think it's a totally different ball game if you know, we hit those two hucks early on in the first half. Um, but, you know, kudos to the machine. They, they really make it hard to find open people. I think another difference, I mean, I went back and watched the game tape from our Pro Champs finals, and, you know, we played about the same quality of offensive game in the first half as we did in the second half. The difference was that our D was able to get on a big roll in the first half. Um, and so, I mean, in my mind, it's really... It, it comes down to a couple of those shots falling. I loved the defensive pressure that we were getting against Machine in that first half. Um, I think we had a great defensive game plan. Uh, and I think that, you know, if our O, you know, if, if a couple of shots had fallen and we get a couple more bites at the apple, I think we get a couple of breaks uh, instead of them. So I think it's, you know, that's just how the flow of the game goes. Uh, that being said, they did a really good job of capitalizing on every opportunity that they got um, and you know they also played a very disciplined offense against our really good pressure defense yeah I think you made a really good point about them being extremely efficient on D-line offense was there anything different besides like Kurt being here that stood out that made their D-line offense so good um, again you know my perspective on the field I I felt like we played similarly tight D against them when they got the turn. Did we get any turns back? I feel like they punched in every single chance. I think they were perfect. That five sucks. for five. <laughs> six for six. Uh, no, I mean, there were, there were quite a few that we were really close oh. on, right? And we, you know, we have some of the best defenders on our team playing, the, playing on offense. And, you know, we got hands on some. We were right there. Uh, 
you know, it, it's a game with very, very small margins when teams are this talented. And, get, you know, just hats off, right? They, they made the plays, and we were right there. I don't know, not, nothing huge. Kurt helps. He's good. <laughs> Can you speak to, um, on the defensive side of the ball for Machine, uh, they are running some similar schemes that you've talked about before. You didn't see anything in particular that was all that out of the ordinary, but they've had some new personnel come in this year. Some personnel, particularly in this game, that played pretty spectacularly. Johnny Vansfield comes to mind. Um, were there any of the new uh, players on Machine, or even players that you had seen there before but kind of played above the level you were expecting of them today? Uh, I mean, they're a great team on paper, and they were a great team on the field. Um, I, the the thing that that I think uh, you know might have made the difference was it, it's it just it felt like every single point, every single one of their guys was extremely hungry to get a D. They were flying around there, um, and you know we're used to that level of pressure as an O line. Um, but even world-class players, I mean, this is what we tell our D-line. We tell our own D-line. If we continue to apply this level of pressure, something is going to crack. A, a throw is going to go just a little bit a little bit off, and we're going to be able to take advantage of it. Um, so, you know, uh, again, I mean, I think it wasn't so much uh, that any single player was surprisingly good. It was that at any given moment, all seven of their guys on the field were playing at a very, very high level. Um, you know, I think we were right there with them. Um, honestly, I think I think the the margins in this game on a point by point basis were incredibly thin. Um, you know, and maybe they were 99% to our 97 point by point, and that and and that makes the difference on a handful of points. I think it was the last offensive possession of the game for Pony. Uh, Alex threw a sort of fading black uh, back shoulder blade to the dead break space in the end zone to Ben and. Um, that seemed, uh, I think maybe that was one of the first times that you took that shot all game. Um, was that a space that you thought after that was like, hey, maybe we should have been attacking that more? Um, because it seemed as though Machine was very keyed in on taking away things on the fourth side, taking away those straight, deep shots that are you know big, long ones, as opposed to the kind of more bladier, fading edge shots. Um, is that anything you talked about or thought about at all? Well, Pat, if you watch the tape, I threw some crazy ones to the break side too. So a little bit of credit, man. Uh, <laughs> now, when we talk, <laughs> we talked about that being an open space, uh, but we also know they have playmakers like Vaughn and Johnny roaming around that you know will make it tough, right? So it's it's hard sometimes to see that space, know it's open for a second, but knowing they have guys that can close on it really quick. So you know we're we're aware of the the spaces. It's just it's hard to get it there sometimes with with those kind of guys. Yep. <laughs> um, do you think, uh, can you speak to how hard it is to beat the same good team every time you play them this season? Apparently kind of tough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's, it, I, I think it's, it's hard only in as much as, like, we, we get to know them and they get to know us. Um, so, uh, I, I don't, I don't think that there's a, it, it didn't feel to me like there was a particular mental block here. Um, you know, I think we came in feeling very prepared and very confident. Um, there wasn't an ounce of complacency. I think we knew exactly what kind of challenge we were going to get. Um, and, uh, yeah, they just played an outstanding game. And... Um, and last, one last question. Where um, one big difference uh, on the stat sheet, at least between this game tonight and the last game at Pro Champs, is that um, the D line got a lot more hands on the disc um, in September. Where I know the pressure was there a lot of the time, but w where were the blocks this game? Do you have any insight into that? You're talking about our D line. Or I'm talking about uh, yeah, Pony's D line um, until the last until the point at. Uh, 14-9 was having trouble actually getting their hand on the disc to get it away from the machine guys. I didn't notice that. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong. Uh, I think I think the, the type of defense that, that we tend to play as a team is uh, 
less focused on playmaking blocks and more focused on creating chaos and wearing teams down over the course of a point and getting them to either make a mistake or throw a throw that they're not used to throwing that we can then eat up or poach out right. Um, and I think that if I look at the game possession by possession, there were tons and tons of, you know, I would say the vast majority of our defensive chances felt like wins in the sense of our defense was doing what we wanted them to, right? They were taking away their option A, oftentimes their option B as well, forcing them to go to option C. Um, and frankly, every other team we've played this year, when we can force them to option C over and over again, gives us a ball to make a play on. Um, and they seemed comfortable enough going to their option C a bunch of times per point. Um, so again, I think it's, it's no, no shame on our D-line. Hats off to their O for playing well. Uh, Keith Rayner, you, last season, Pony pursues the title. You have a, a team like Revolver in front of you that uh, you get to conquer in that, in that big final game. Did this season, did it feel different with the target on your back as the reigning champs? For sure. Uh, you know, last year, people would ask if Pony was the favorite, and I always said no. Um, you know, it was Revolver until Revolver was knocked out. Uh, this year, we were, you know, consistently talked about being one of the favorites, uh, and that's certainly different, right? You know, we, whether we talk about it or not, the expectation was pretty much always for everybody to win nationals, uh, and that is an incredibly hard thing to do, right? The margins are super small. Good teams can beat you. We've lost a few times throughout the year. It's, you know, we're, we're never going to sneak up on anybody the way we were kind of able to last year at times, and yeah, it's just tough, right? Everyone's going to give you the best shot. There's 20 games of, of you know film on us now so some of the stuff is is not going to be as surprising to other teams and people know what we like to do and everyone wants to beat us so yeah tough yeah i think for for sure it's different i mean uh i think we did a very good job as a team on a mental preparation level not feeling the burden of those expectations too much we talked a lot about how we didn't have anything to defend that we had to just go out and grab wins one after the other um, and that was certainly the attitude we brought into the game tonight. Um, felt great going into the game. Uh, you know, I think the, the difference that I noticed on a tactical level was uh, just teams better prepared to play us specifically. Um, everybody we played clearly had a game plan for how they wanted to take away what we like to do. Um, and, you know, that's a great challenge. Uh, it was a really fun challenge to prepare for in practices. Uh, and, you know, even in a funny way, it was a fun challenge to go out and try to tackle tonight, um, even though we didn't really succeed. So, yeah. Final question. To you, d does the season feel like a success? Hmm. We're probably going to have different answers on this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you first then. Yes and no, right? I mean, 10 minutes after the game ends. Well, that's my answer, too. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I mean, 10 minutes after the game, it's very, very challenging to, to say, yeah, what a fun, successful season. We just got pounded in the semis. Uh, that's, that's hard. But we, you know, we talked a lot all year about the season being about loving each other, appreciating each other, having a good time, and just really appreciating the, the six or seven months we get to spend together. And making semifinals is very, very hard. Uh, I've, I've been fortunate to play on quite a few good teams that never got here. Um, you know, so there's nothing to be upset or embarrassed about. This is a tough place to get to. We put up a good fight. And I'm sure in a few days, I'll say, yeah, it was a successful season, right? Getting the two seed at Nationals, winning big games, winning stream games, uh, you know, getting better as a team throughout the year. All that is such a fun process. And, you know, you get to spend all summer with some of your best, closest friends. So, yeah, in that regard, I'd have to say it's a success. It stinks to come up, you know, game short or whatever it was. I couldn't have said it better, man. Really. <laughs> yeah. We've come a long way. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Th thanks, uh, Ben, ben then uh, Hoovelin and Sean Keegan from New York Pony. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.
Live on UltiWorld.com, we have Chicago machine coach Andy Nielsen. Hi, Andy. Thanks for being here. Um, Edward Stevens, uh, uh, you had a big game from a few different players today. Kirk Gibson stepped up and played really well. Joe White played really well. John, Johnny Bansfield played out of his mind. Nate Goff out there playing great defense. Um, how much of those individual successes are those individuals just stepping up in a big way in a big game and how much is it the team lifting them up by really locking down systems i think um that really it is people responding um finally to the way that um, some guys are playing like uh i think um, those guys are real catalysts um and um people all you, you see those big plays um but I think the bigger thing is the way that the whole picture um, was working today. Um, so we've been making plays all tournament, um, but I think some of our detail and system has not been where we wanted it to be. Um, and putting that stuff in place is why um, we had the result that we had today. Um, and just to push back a little bit, though, I mean, it's not a system play when Johnny Bansfield, or not a system play, it's not a system moment when Bansfield roofs Chris Kotcher just outside the end zone. I mean, that is, where is that coming from? Uh, well, I mean, he, he's a great athlete, and I think um, we we just want, I mean, the system is to put guys in um, positions to make dynamic plays, and um, so I think that that um, is working. I, I hope that we won't have to, um, like, rely on plays like that uh, as we go down the line, um, but I think the one that I would point to is uh, John throwing uh, really a routine bomb to Nate Goff um, early in the first half, um, and that stuff is... Um, I think very much a system play at a really high level. Hey Andy, um, mm -hmm. so you lost to Pony at the Pro Champ Championship game. You lost them in pool play that game. You lost to them last year in quarterfinals. I'm sure you didn't need the history lesson here. Um, Always good to have you, history. <laughs> <laughs> you you play a team like that so many times. Of course, you're going to start to notice patterns. You're going to start thinking, how do I beat this team? How do I beat this team? What did you implement here tonight? that you've been sort of dreaming up and thinking about the next time you get a shot at Pony after losing them last year, after losing them earlier this mm -hmm. year? Yeah, I think, um, I think it is the same game plan uh, done at a higher level. Um, and so I, I think that we notice um, it really in a, in a way that they, I think, do really well defensively, um, notice some spaces of stagnation in their defense um, and uh, our opportunistic moving into um, passing lanes from there. Um, and... Um, I, I think uh, that, that we were really successful combining that with pressure on the handlers um, and then giving them a, a little bit fewer options because, I mean, they have so many dynamic players, um, really good spacing, um, and I think uh, just having us uh, be a little more chaotic than their orderliness um, that they want uh, was really helpful. When you're creating that pressure on the handlers, it seems like you're able to do it both in a more uh, person-oriented defense as well as with your 1-3-3 uh, three, three zone. Um, can you talk a little bit about the differences between how you create pre -esher, uh, pressure with your person look versus with your zone look? Yeah, I think um, uh, paying attention to like the angle of attack, so rotating towards the, um, the big spaces and, and taking those away with our bodies in a one-on-one -on -one sense. Um, and then um, the... I think the zone um, is more about um, kind of trying to dial up a block, um, uh, look look for them to um, make a mistake. Um, yeah. Your zone has you know gotten a lot of accolades over the past couple of years. A lot of other teams in the division are starting to copy it. Um, Sockeye stands out uh, particularly as an example. So um, how do you keep that zone look fresh, even though you know that people are looking at it and you know that other teams are learning it so well that they're running it themselves? Yeah, I think um, the it's like a, a misnomer to say that the structure of it is the main feature, if, if that makes sense. And I think that um, it is um, defensive players finding good edges and always being threats and being aggressive um, that I think is the main feature. Um, yeah. So by putting new defensive players into the roles, you're able to change the zone because it allows them... And I think ref refining that fundamental about um, how far you can reel off different people, um, where, where your individual edges are. Um, makes it um, uh, a new look every time in sometimes a good way and sometimes a way that's not so good. So. Hey, Andy, thanks for joining us.
I had a couple more specific questions in terms of the game plan for Pony. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, big parts of Pony's offense are Jimmy Mickle and Ben Yacht, and it looked like there might have you effectively neutralized them for large parts of the game tonight. Was there anything specific that you guys worked on to take those two players away? Um, I think that some was um, paying attention to set plays, so being aware of patterns. Um, and I think that we have some um, serious stoppers on D, um, and give those you give those guys a little bit of extra information, and they're really dangerous. I also, another feature of tonight's defense was taking away the deep game of Pony. They never really got it established. Obviously, they, they threw a couple that were a little too fast, which were great. Yeah, and a couple great ones. Yeah, and a couple great ones. But was did you place any particular emphasis here making an adjustment around the deep game, or was that more coincidental? Um, yeah, I think I think that that was, that was part of it. Um, yeah, queuing in on, on certain uh, looks that they want. But um, I think that that strikes me as like more fundamental um, and uh, a way that that our defense likes to play. Okay. Uh, a little bit of shit. Uh, one more def defense question, I guess, before the other side of it. How much direction do you give Johnny Bansfield on defense in terms of his ability to roam and improvise on the field? Uh, you mean how much instruction or how much? Uh, sorry. Kind of both. Okay. Uh, obviously, he has like some leeway to do things. But yeah, I think he's a um, he's a really creative player, and I think um, a really cerebral player. Um, and so I think it's more like adding um, information and practice and uh, technique to his really considerable yeah. toolkit. To I think a, a better way to formulate the question is: Are you building something around his improvisation, or is he improvising? in the structure of, say, a match of defense? Yeah, I think um, he is, um, yeah, that's the plan, and he is really good at it. OK, yeah. fair. Uh, and you guys were super efficient on D-line offense tonight. That's what I heard, yeah. Yeah, uh, I think that tracks. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, was there any particular change or adjustment that led to that success? I think that um, it's more decisiveness. Um, and uh, so we have uh, so many good players uh, that I think it has been uh, in the past um, maybe a little bit too much looking around and wondering, should I do this? Should somebody else? Um, oh, is it my shit. turn and all that stuff? Um, and um, I think now people are just making decisions and then being able to play off those decisions. Cool. Uh, and last question for me, and I'll pass it on. What are... These people are really nice. Oh, yeah, they're great. Yeah. What lesson did you learn about the team tonight that you'll take with you going forward? Um, I think that uh, it's just a big kind of confidence thing for us. Um, this is... Uh, Machine's first finals appearance, and um, knowing that you're, uh, you've got what it takes is good in an abstract way, um, and I think this win um, with us putting a lot of those things together um, makes it more concrete. Uh, you mentioned that this is the first time this team has ever made the final. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to let yourself celebrate that at all? I feel like we haven't seen you crack a smile yet. This, <laughs> this, uh, um, yeah, I, I think that... Um, all the the big tone for us is um, that this is like the the last opportunity that we have to be together, and so I'm really excited to um, give everything into that. Um, and I think it's been really key for us and me personally this week to um, stay in the present. Um, and so uh, I'm definitely happy and proud. And I uh, like I was saying to you guys before um, that it feels like there's a lot to do. Um, so um, trying to keep the nose to the grindstone for. Uh, another day. Um, you know, you beat Pony. It felt like you kind of stole their role from last season, where they have this, you know, they had this goal of taking down the top dog. Did so in really emphatic fashion. You kind of did so similarly today. Is there anything that you took from their performances last year um, and helped trying to form what this team could do this year? Um, I think really uh, one thing that I'm impressed with them about. Uh, is the way that they buy into each other um, and that while 
Uh, a lot of their system stuff, I think, was formulated around other teams. Uh, a lot of their identity is really uh, internal and tight, and um, I think that, that that's something that I really believe in, and I think that's something that um, we uh, machine work hard to cultivate also. Defensively, did you take anything away from the way they attacked down Revolver last year? Uh, I mean, that the when they are working their um, defensive scheme um, when guys are reeling off in certain spaces and getting tight in certain spaces like it's definitely inspiring and um, definitely great uh, fundamentals of defense um, that are uh, the types of things that people anybody who's watching the game should be be thinking about so they um, definitely leading the way on that in some ways and um, yeah absolutely all right Andy Nielsen coach of Chicago Machine from Worldcom thank you so much